Hey, and welcome to Hypnotize Me, the podcast about hypnosis, transformation, and healing. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Bonet, and I'm your host. Today's interview is all about hypnosis for addiction, and it is a really interesting program, unique. I have never, ever seen this type of program offered anywhere. It is an online rehab that uses hypnosis as an integral part of its offering as part of its training. You can do this training from anywhere in the world. And I happen to know the guy who put it together. So when I saw this online and I actually ran across a news story on it, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> let me reach out to him and see what's going on and see if I could interview him. Now, I am in a room with three people when I'm interviewing this time. So you will hear some table noises and um, some movement that you don't normally hear on the podcast. Those generally become background noises if you just continue to listen. It's so amazing the human ear's ability to listen for the talking, right? To, for the sounds that are important and to really just filter out those ones that aren't. So I hope that's your experience of it. I know it was mine when I was editing this over time, but I did try to edit out as much as I could of that background noise. All right, let's jump right in. Welcome to the Hypnotizing Podcast. I am here with Dayan, which I may also call him Dean, okay, <laughs> who I've known for... Uh, what did we say, eight or eight or ten years or something like that? Ten easily. Right, yeah. ten, yeah. And Jody and Ebner from Live Rich. And the reason they're here is because I ran across their program. I mean, I, I follow Dan online and Facebook, and, you know, we keep in touch through the years. But I noticed he was running a hypnosis program for recovery, and you hardly ever see that, like, at all. <laughs> like hardly yeah. ever. So I wanted to talk to, to Dean immediately and say, Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? What model are you using? What is this about? So we're going to jump into that. But first I'm going to ask the question that I ask all my guests. What was your first experience with hypnosis? Your personal experience? I guess uh, I'm going to go first. The first experience with hypnosis happened to me when I was looking for something that's going to make me feel better. Mm. But the reason why I even believed in that goes way, way, way before I even recognized that. I have a friend whom I was doing computers with. Mm -hmm. This guy is, is an engineer in computer science, an electric engineer, and he has probably some doctorate in mm -hmm. some robotics or something. Did really well in his life. Uh, 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 working for military, providing some services for the for the on the warships. Basically retired by the age of forty five, and still doing computers. When I was doing computers, mostly I ga I gave him so much business that there was a time when he needed help, and I told him, Michael, mm -hmm. you need to hire somebody because I'm gonna make your business grow. You're falling behind, and I'm falling behind. And Michael stood up and said, Dean. I had 30 employees every time on that ship. Mm -hmm. I had 30 employees all my life working for me, minimum plus contractors. And if there's one thing, and let me tell you, Michael retired mm -hmm. early because he made so much money and she just didn't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So he did great. Yeah. I'd say thanks to these employees. But what Michael said is if I learn one thing from my employees, I learn how to hate them. I'm never going to have employee anymore. <laughs> I was like, okay, Great. Michael, sorry. Uh -huh. He was in a Boca, Boca Raton on 441 West. And at that time, I'm on the east side. Uh -huh. So I'm driving back and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm so fortunate with my employees because I love working with them. Uh -huh. I'm so lucky to have beautiful people working for me. And as the time is passing by, I'm recognizing, as we already know, we all know this, if we work with people with work, you work with problems. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with them. What I actually didn't recognize is they were just normal people with problems. I loved dealing with it. Yes. And yes. that's why I was under the impression that my employees are great. <laughs> 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 None of these three guys is with me anymore. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I changed the business. I changed the industry. Yes, and I don't do computers anymore. <laughs> but that's for me first thing mm -hmm. that got me interested in it is if you can become a hypnotist, mm -hmm. you need to know human psyche. You need yes. to understand subconscious mind. Yes. You need to know how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. So if one can do that, well, let me learn that so I can be even better with the people I communicate. Uh -huh. And then you start your research. This day and age, we live in the best time in the, in the history of a planet. Yes. Come on, 21st century, you go online, you find out whatever you want. All you uh -huh. need to know is to how to ask the question. So I started doing my research. Uh -huh. I started being exposed to people who are doing it. NLP, aha, uh -huh, NLP, uh -huh. Tony Robbins talks about NLP. Yes. All, there, all and this. let me pause you for a minute. That's neurolinguistic programming. Yes, yes. So yeah. I came across with that. Well, it's such an important part in hypnotherapy. It I is. Mean. It's a way to talk to people. That's Correct. very effective and addresses more of the subconscious than the conscious mind. And what I like about it, it's pure science. Subconscious mind is something yes. invisible. Uh -huh. So it's hard to explain, but there's a science behind it. So you learn NLP words, NLP way of communication, and your message gets communicated better. The way I say, words uh -huh. are nothing but the vessel to help emotion come out. Yes. Now, if you yeah. want to master the way you communicate with people, master the words you're communicating with. So that from NLP led me to hypnosis, to mm -hmm. introduction to a person that usually doesn't train but she got me into her training, uh -huh. and that training, I met other people, and and I live it. Mm. And I live it. So when so was this for you? Th How this, many years? This was in 2015, 14. 14? 14. 2014. May okay. of 2014, yes. Yes, when I got wow. certified. Yes. But the process, the process is like like three years prior. Yes, when so I'm, you started researching getting into, and looking. Yeah, then I, then and, I uh -huh. found there are marks, I show you. Uh -huh. On the, at that time on the internet, he had two sessions that one he was giving for free, uh -huh. the other one he was charging for. Uh -huh. I'm one of these early adopters. So the moment I saw him, I appreciated. And I was also, this is, I think, important. Uh -huh. I was playing it for my phone. Uh -huh. And yeah. it was effective. As a matter of fact, right here in this office, we'll show you later, uh -huh. we have a, a room for meditation. Mm -hmm. Jody went the other day. I go quite often. Just mm -hmm. go reprogram yourself, how yes, our, our right, will right. says. Yeah. yeah. And just take a break. So then your first experience with hypnosis was during your training? My oh. first experience with hypnosis is, I would say, with Tony Robbins. I was, with Tony Robbins, yeah. Yeah, because I was at the, at the, in the group of six, 7,000 people, uh -huh. and I got hypnotized. <laughs> Because he's hypnotic. <laughs> over and over again. Over right, and over again. Right. So it was really a... Mm. Really powerful. And I recognize, well, guided meditation is what I recognize I'm really good at. Because mm -hmm. I have good imagination and we know mm -hmm. who can be hypnotized and we know what it takes to become hypnotized. And I was yes. always able to focus. And that's, that's all that it takes. And let it go. Uh -huh. And let it go. That's the key word. Right, right. So then when did you move into thinking hypnosis could be used for addiction and well, recovery? Let's say health, because e I, I, even the word, right? Like, let's say hypnosis can be used for addiction, right? Mm -hmm. Like, even rephrasing that word, in terms of hypnosis can be used to create health and comfort and ease for people in their life, so that they don't need to use. Correct. Hypnosis yeah. is extremely powerful because it gives a hypnotist way to communicate to subconscious mind mm -hmm. using suggestions mm -hmm. that we know here, patient actually accepts as his own thoughts, mm -hmm. as his yes. own ideas. Mm -hmm. And we know how powerful that is. Why I applied it in addiction? It mm -hmm. can be applied in anything. Mm -hmm. But I got involved. I got involved in the world of, of, uh, of addiction through my own experience, through experience of other, other people. Mm -hmm. And I recognize how effective it is and it's not being used. Mm -hmm. I did a little research again mm -hmm. on the internet and I found out that in UK hypnosis is actually recognized and even insurance covered mm -hmm. for many things that is still not utilized here. People yes. know about it. Yeah. People they have no doubt how effective it is. I haven't mm -hmm. come across a person that I would ask, have you ever been hypnotized? Did it work? Uh -huh. Everybody says it worked. 
No, only people who would who who say uh-huh. no to that are people who say, "Oh, I can't be hypnotized." Or you come across this quite often. Oh, I don't want to be hypnotized, and all of a sudden I'm not afraid of cats. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden I wake up and I'm not afraid of cats. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. That's not, uh... Well, I have run across some people who said no, it, it wasn't effective for them at their at that time of their life, mm-hmm. but the vast majority of people really enjoy hypnosis. Yeah. Right? If nothing else, they enjoy how to Or they, how they to... sit in the fear camp yeah. right? of like, no, that's fearful. I have to really trust somebody or mm-hmm. this, or they don't know what it is, or can you control me? Like all of these <laughs> questions that I actually answer pretty frequently on the podcast, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 yes. Like, you know, so, um, so when did you decide, okay, I'm going to put together a program to address addiction with hypnosis? Original idea was to purchase a rehab. Mm-hmm. And, and Dr. Horton, Will Horton, and I started looking. He was one of my trainers. And I, I approached him. I said, Doc, do you want to get involved if I purchase a rehab? He said, yeah, that's, that's what I do. That's my passion. So he moved to South Florida because he's on the West Coast mm-hmm. and we found a place that we wanted to buy. We went very deep into looking everything about that place and we recognized that that's not something we want to do for many reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, one of them is that you still stay structured. Mm-hmm. In order to remain in the business, you, do, you have to treat it as business. My take and why I wanted to do this wasn't really business. But then you have to play by certain rules because the insurance pays, because the insurance pays, you've got to yeah. square it. So yes. You've got to have a code for this, code for that, code for yes. that, right? Mm-hmm. And then you collect your money with 90 days or whatever it is. Right. Then you have to find a patient. You've got to fill up the bed. Mm-hmm. So now there's an there's a acquisition cost. There's mm-hmm. a lead. Mm-hmm. For me, that was a person. Then there's a dead lead. For me, that's still a person. Yes. You see, so as, as I was getting more involved in the industry, mm-hmm. I recognized that I don't necessarily want to be part of that industry. Even if my take was, okay, let's get something that's working. We live in mm-hmm. South Florida. When I started thinking about it, it was rehab paradise. We'll, we'll mention yes. that it's, yeah. it's, it's not anymore. Mm-hmm. These centers are suffering. Mm-hmm. These, who's actually suffering? people in need for help. Yeah, so I right. wanted to incorporate something that it's new, that it's not mm-hmm. used, and I know effective, and it would be by the way, because we'll accept the job. Mm-hmm. So I was beautiful, let's do this. So because of this reason that I mentioned, we decided not to do this, and this was a couple of years ago. And then it was a couple of months of on hold completely, and Jody just today reminded me, it was February 7th last year, mm-hmm. when I was talking to Will and I go, Will, we can do this online. Because I know in my training, mm-hmm. somebody was trained through Skype yes. and accept the testing in certain hours that had to be one-on-one, uh-huh. she got certified through that. And I know how powerful it is because in, in any communication that I have today, mm-hmm. I use video conference. Mm-hmm. So it can be done. Yes. And Will said, of course. So we sat down, we created a mm-hmm. 21-day program at the time we called him because he's your colleague, mm-hmm. he's a hypnotist, he works with people, he follows certain structures, so let's make a program. And we started calling it program, right? Uh-huh. But then I recognized, listen, if we want to set somebody free and the training was live free, mm-hmm. because you can't live before you live free, you can't be live free of addiction before you live So get rid of that. Now, if I have a program, I'm putting you from one box into another box. Uh Might work. But why would I do that? Why wouldn't I set you free? And for that, I'm going to train you. Mm. Now we're calling it the training. It's 21 Mm -hmm. days training. And May 1st last year, we officially started doing this. Mm. And uh, 21 days was... Design because as you know, it takes 21 days to break a habit. Mm-hmm. And if we manage to have person 21 days emerged in mm-hmm. this, we have a pretty good chance. How much of the traditional counseling models incorporated into it? So it's like, do they have a, a coach, quote unquote, one-on-one to help them at the beginning? Or is it really self-motivated? Like here's our training and you can go online access at any time you want or is there someone that they're connected to 
I, I'd like to direct this to Jory because this is the question when we communicate with people. I always like to give to her because she okay. she sees it with with it with internal response uh-huh. to it. So, the training is designed to give them something to do every day. So, day one. You have the first day you log in, we give them a portal online. Mm -hmm. So they log in, username, password. Mm -hmm. Before that, they've connected with one of us in the training, ask some questions, what their situation is, and we get them started immediately. We don't want to wait. We want them to say yes right now and get them started. Mm -hmm. Um, They log into the portal, and they have a hypnosis session already waiting for them for that day based on that topic of the day. Mm -hmm. Then they have a video that they must watch that day, which is like a half an hour, 45 minutes, based on the same subject. Mm -hmm. Then that same day, they have a live class, which is with the facilitator, Uh who's Dr. Will Horton, or that's Abner, one of the other Uh facilitators. And they can speak face-to-face, ask questions, they engage. They can even, if if they're still kind of hesitant about you know, how much they want to participate, Mm -hmm. they can um, turn off their audio, they can turn off their video, Mm -hmm. which usually happens. We had a couple clients who started with their face locked out, and then after a couple sessions, they started engaging after they built that trust. They feel more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And then the fourth step um, of the training of per day um, they have to journal. So mm-hmm. after they've listened to the hypnosis, after they've watched the video, after mm-hmm. they've had their live class, they must journal and we monitor the journaling because we want them to have all these thoughts, all these ideas, all mm-hmm. these new revelations that they're going to be having. We want them to put it on paper and it's for them. We don't mm-hmm. want to monitor it. We know how much of an impact it is journaling. I know how much of an impact it had on me journaling. Because then after the 21 days, they're able to go back and track their progress. Like, oh my gosh, just 21 days ago, I was writing this about myself and now I'm looking at day 21 and I'm set free and these are the things that I'm writing. And they have access to, they can call us, they can email us, Mm -hmm. they can message us, they can Facebook message us. We have Facebook group group chats that they all participate in. So we keep them connected as much as possible. Okay, so they're doing this all from home, which I know that um, Dayan and I have discussed is like a real benefit because some people can't really go, one, they don't want it on the record anywhere. (laughs) Two, they don't have 30 days to take off to go into rehab. Mm -hmm. They want to keep working. Mm -hmm. They have kids. They have Three, a family. They have kids, they have a family they have to take care of. They don't have the support yeah. to do that. They're logging in during this all from home. Mm-hmm. What is their time commitment, let's say, per day when they do this? They are committed to one hour, which is the live class. That's the only thing that have they have to do at a set time. Okay, the rest they can access. The rest they well. can access, yeah. They have the hypnosis. We actually um, have an awake hypnosis mm-hmm. and a sleep hypnosis. Mm-hmm. So I suggest... When you first wake up in the morning to listen to the one that's awake because it helps you set your day and focus. Mm-hmm. And then before you go to bed, you put the sleep hypnosis on. Mm-hmm. And it's you have that hypnosis, awake hypnosis, the video, the live video, and then this hypnosis to go to sleep talking about the same subject yeah. all Every day. day long. All day long. And then they work their way through the 21 days that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. All right. And the results, responses are so fast that what she just mentioned prior to this, what was her name, then on day two? Mar- uh, Marjorie, yeah. Yeah, she, she said. She, she said she hasn't slept eight hours in years. Mm-hmm. She says maybe two or three hours consecutively a night she was sleeping before she started the training. Right. After day two, she writes us a message like, holy crap, uh-huh. <laughs> I have not slept this long in God knows how long. This hypnosis is amazing. It's uh-huh. life-changing. And she's still sober after her training. Awesome. Still connected, still uh-huh. involved. Let me ask, when people finish the training, let's say, and then what, what are they reporting to you about urges? Because that, that's the biggest thing for addiction generally. It's, it's like their urge is not lifted, right? Like they still have that urge they still want to do whatever their drug of choice is. So what have you heard back around the urges and do you address that in the hypnosis? 
So before the 21 days are over, we have had clients say, I didn't think that I didn't come to this training to be happy and I'm happy. I didn't mm. think I could ever be this happy uh -huh. and they're happy. They're feeling good. They're feeling, they're feeling confident again. And that's part of the hypnosis. We have a day on confidence. We have a day uh -huh. on, uh, stress. We show them emotional freedom techniques, mm -hmm. EFT, mm -hmm. the tapping that's yep. on day two. And that's, it kickstarts that throughout the rest of the training. So they can use that before they go to work. We had one client who, she said she would freak out before leaving the house. Freak out anxiety. Yeah. So she was shown the EFT before she would leave the house and she would do it every time. And she was actually one of the ones who said, I didn't think that I could be this happy. Our goal is to have those urges lifted that it mm -hmm. just becomes a thought. Comes mm -hmm. in and it goes out. And mm -hmm. they have the tools and techniques to handle those urges. Mm -hmm. One of the first classes that we had we recognize the need for connection to stay connected. Mm -hmm. So we opened up an alumni class, which is twice a week now, to have them stay connected for any of those times that the urges pop up or okay. they, they need something to empower them to mm -hmm. be reconnected. So they'll do the alumni class. Mm -hmm. And we actually created a keep the momentum course. Mm -hmm. So they finish the 21 days and we're like, we need them to keep the momentum. We uh -huh. need them to now, okay, you did the training, 21-day mm -hmm. training, which you can't start recovery until you've learned how to do recovery, mm -hmm. right? And that's part of the reason why we started calling it a training. We will train you mm -hmm. how to start your recovery. Once training's done, your recovery can begin. Um, so to keep the momentum. Okay. So that's interesting. Very different than, mm -hmm. let's say walking into an AA meeting and not knowing what the hell to do. Yes. And right. not having that one person, which is generally what a sponsor is for. So if you get one right away, yes, right. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes a problem getting one or asking for one or mm -hmm. having the confidence to get one. Yes. People mm -hmm. are shy. They have all the kinds of different personalities. That was actually one of my questions is how does this work in conjunction with 12 step? Is it, was it designed to support 12 step? Was it designed as completely separate? Like you don't need 12 step afterwards. What was the thought process around it? Well, this the 12 is, steps. Can you just say who you are so sure. they know um, who you're talking? <laughs> well, this is Abner and Thank you. Uh, the 12 steps, they are actually included in our 21 days as well. There mm -hmm. are four days of our training that are just for the 12 steps that we talk about it because we believe that the 12 steps do work. Uh, there's data. That yes, shows millions that of work. people. <laughs> right. so, millions of data points and right. millions of people. And one of the nice things about it is that the way that we set it up, first we give them 14 days of different tools mm -hmm. for how to deal with their addiction and the anchors or triggers. And then we get into the 12 steps and then show them this also works and look at all the ways that they actually correlate mm -hmm. our training with the 12 steps. And at that point, it's something that they can say, well, the 12 steps, well, they're very nice. I think this is something that I could also look into the future maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe start going to AA meetings or not, because we know that for some people it does work, for some people it doesn't. Right, it's not a good fit for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. So we give them this opening, this opportunity to be able to choose as well mm -hmm. so incorporate incorporate all the tools that we just giving you mm -hmm. and also if you want all the tools from the 12 steps as well right so even even people who were exposed to it before have deeper understanding of mm -hmm. it because we know that spiritual awakening mm -hmm. helps we know that in order for 12 steps to actually work, you need to retrieve that aha moment, to have a breakthrough, to yes. have a spiritual awakening. But many people are not ready for that. Mm -hmm. Now, once they're exposed to something like this, they have a aha moment before even go there. And they go, wow, 12 steps are actually cool. Because mm -hmm. it all falls down how they got introduced to it. They just need to be served properly and this is one of the things that that we do and hypnosis in the morning and every day in a, in the same topic a whole day in the morning at night greatly helps that it kind of it kind of puts it all together i think it's one of the elements of why this is successful mm -hmm. 
Mm. Very important. And when you say spiritual awakening, you're talking like secular, right? Non-religious. Because I know that's a question that. Oh, that's Abner. That's Abner. <laughs> Would you introduce yourself? I mean, along, <laughs> along with what you, what you. Uh... This is Abner again, and part of my um, background is actually in theology. Mm-hmm. So I did study theology. I did study um, from the Christian point of mm-hmm. view background, and I believe one of the things that is really great about Live Rich is that it gives you that freedom to pursue your recovery. Not from a religious standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint. And for a lot of people, like, well, that seems like to be the same thing. Not quite. Yeah, because religion, then you are following a yeah. certain set of dogmas and rules, mm-hmm. where in the approach that we take, it's a more freeing one. It's whatever works for you, mm-hmm. whatever is comfortable for you at this moment in your life. Mm-hmm. And even on um, step three of the 12 steps, it says that we surrender our will to God mm-hmm. as we understood Him. So yes. that's something that we like to emphasize quite a bit since we are not a religious organization. Mm-hmm. As you understand God or spirituality or the universe. Mm-hmm. So how that works for you. And we've seen people from both ends of the spectrum. We've seen people that are a little skittish about hypnosis. Mm-hmm. They come from that more religious side. Yes. And then we are actually able to tell them, well, listen, hypnosis is not the scary thing that people make it to be, especially in the religious world. Mm -hmm. And I came from that, so I know exactly what's said and thought of. Mm -hmm. And then we can break them down and basically break those stigmas. And for the people that are averted to religion, we can actually say, well, this is not a religious, but more of a spiritual journey. So you're saying the spiritual journey helps them then it is kick the addiction. Yes, it's, it, it's yeah. incredibly important. Spiritual awakening is the key. Can you measure one spirituality? No. I don't think you can. No, I've always said, um, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, but I was... Yeah, I grew up in a very religious home, a father who was a minister, and my mother then became a minister after he died. And then I became an atheist for 20 years. And then, <laughs> right? and then awakening. <laughs> yes. Right? Well, I would always say, you know, sometimes I felt like, uh, you know, I'd be in early motherhood and being like, please, God, somebody help me. I don't believe in you, but somebody help me here right? <laughs> so that these children stay alive, right? But, you know, moments of that would come in. But eventually I felt like I had more of a sense of spirituality and a belief not necessarily in a God, but some kind of higher power. But what I often say is that that's an emotional experience. Like you cannot sit across from an atheist and say, you need to feel spiritual, right? Mm-hmm. Or you need to do this, or you need to, it is emotional. Mm-hmm. That's it. But so the, is religion. It's, it's emotional experience. For me, the levels are aha moment. Mm-hmm. That's a step one. If Abner says something while they are listening to him or in a hypnotic session or on a video or in a welcome email or in interview to see if they apply for scholarships, it doesn't matter. If they have a ha moment, that's a step one. Because a ha moment leads you to a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Breakthrough is a moment when you can make decision that is totally going to change the course of your life. Yes. And that breakthrough, if you carefully observe, is a spiritual awakening. What else can have such an intensity to change the course of your life forever? And that's what we're after. Mm-hmm. Call it any way you want. Uh-huh. But a aha moment that leads to a breakthrough and breakthrough recognize is spiritual awakening because how else you explain something that changes the course of your life? Listen, your past mm-hmm. is going to start to look differently because all of a sudden the meaning you give to everything is changed. Everything, all the problems you had in past, you recognize were nothing but challenges. And challenges, nothing but opportunities to make things even better. Mm -hmm. Problems were gifts. Yes, yes. Once you get to that point, you recognize that that we really don't treat addiction. We treat life. And there's only one way to treat life better than you only the treating, but accepting it, that it's a little bit more than what you think it is. Could someone go through this? Let's see, they're not interested in spirituality. 
let's say no, no, they're not interested. They're hardcore atheists. Could they go through this program still and it be effective for yes, them? Yes, that's why I said that's why okay. I like NLP and hypnosis because uh-huh. it's effective and it's science. Mm-hmm. You might have better experience, Abner, than than me. Because you are hands on with them, face to face. We also have one of the one of the classes that's called face to face when they get to communicate. But how you overcome that challenge? Because for me, if they give me an opportunity to communicate with them for long enough, I will find a way to say what's gonna give them aha moment. That's all I need. Yes. All right. So for you, it's like the aha moment, and you can call that whatever you like. Some people right. it's spirituality. Other people it's just an aha moment. That's it. It's so, just like that's all. Science not, no that big deal, too, right? That's not right? big deal. The you can give... of DNA was yeah. not a <laughs> moment, right? Yeah. No one would call that spirituality. They call it science. But some people may call it spirituality, actually. So yeah. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that was that Eureka moment, right? Yes. The aha moment, mm-hmm. which I believe. So just this uh, one of the classes that we I about to finish, we have a client that is an atheist. Mm-hmm. And one of the things when we go went to that step of spirituality, how did you know I go about explaining to him? Our goal for him is this. At the end of the day, any great tradition, spiritual tradition, he has this at its core. That its spirituality is a connection between you and other people and you with yourself. Mm-hmm. And that is the great denominator that kind of puts all these great faiths together Mm -hmm. is a connection between you and other people and you and yourself Mm. now you do not need to believe in God as other religions understand it to believe that Mm -hmm. and one of the things that we say is that addiction is a disease of disconnection you lose your connection with yourself and Mm -hmm. with other people and what we're trying to do is to rebuild that bridge of you being able to connect with yourself, Mm -hmm. being true to yourself, and to other people, to other people around. Mm -hmm. Some people will call that spirituality. Some people will just call it life. It's whatever works for you. But you do need to reconnect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the hypnosis is leading them to that reconnection, basically. Yes. The many steps in in, in the hypnosis is building or rebuilding Mm -hmm. your life at every level, your environment, your behavior, and of course your identity. Mm-hmm. Because once you have lost your perception, or maybe you never even gained the proper perspective of who you are, mm-hmm. you'll really not be able to connect with yourself and with other people. Well, yeah, particularly, I mean, there's it's no secret that a lot of the um, people who struggle with addiction come from trauma backgrounds. And trauma often disconnects you from yourself as a coping strategy. Exactly. You know what the trauma is, but often that's that's the main purpose of disconnection, mm-hmm. coping strategy. Let me cope with what's going on. So you're saying that the um, reconnection is a way out of the addiction. Exactly. And the yes. hypnosis addresses that. Yes. We also believe that addiction, uh, most of the times, is really self-medicating. You're oh, yeah. self-medicating in order to get over physical pain or right. psychological pain or mm-hmm. both. Yes. Or both. So or physical pain that causes psychological pain. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Or even right. psychological pain. That, that causes physical pain. Yeah. Yes. Psychosomatic yeah, diseases yeah, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. So. Well, not just psychosomatic diseases. I mean, it's just very clear. Uh, I think it was, I don't know exactly when this is going to air, but the episode on heartbreak. Heartbreak is very physical. A psychological pain that causes physical. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. A lot that happens with a heartbreak, for example. What is a heartbreak? Is a deep disconnection. Disconnection. Mm-hmm. Some, and it's very traumatic. Right. So what we're trying to do is rebuild these connections or build new healthy connections. Mm-hmm. Bringing the quality of life to the higher level. Because mm-hmm. once the quality of life is higher the need for addiction becomes obsolete. That's that's the key. Yes. So internal quality of life you're talking about. Your as well personal as external. perception of it. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Call it an illusion. Right. <laughs> right. In the training, are you giving the practical as well? So are there practical 
stuff that they're they get assignments to do or you know just sort of tools of living like skills of living is that part of it we adopted all the experience that's been written and that will has been studied for for 30 plus years in his practice and recovery okay and he's the man who loves to read who doesn't miss the mm-hmm. opportunity for his own personal development he's a great coach extremely competent probably one of the most competent people in the industry mm-hmm. <gasps> i just said it in the industry one of the most competent in the field in the field yeah. in the in the area and and all the knowledge all the examples all the metaphors all the scientific research uh-huh. are presented and it's presented in a in a visual way uh-huh. we have a powerpoint that sits behind him or uh-huh. Abner as they communicate so it's very visual they talk about it they use metaphors to to uh, the, to 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 evoke the emotion mm-hmm. what you use them in day to day practice so people actually recognize the triggers people actually recognize aha that's what it is mm-hmm. they see we give them the tools so they can recognize what they can change on their own mm-hmm. why i believe that and this was written recently uh, written about Traditional rehab is failing, one of the reasons. Most of the people that I have come across here, being in, a, in South Florida, mm-hmm. come from northeast side of the United States. Mm-hmm. Wintertime, name it, because yes. they come here in a paradise. Mm-hmm. They give them a pool with a palm tree, they take <laughs> right. them to the beach, mm-hmm. they, they take them for, uh, par- j- jumping from, the, from an airplane, they mm-hmm. give them life that they don't have, 21 days, 28 days of paradise Mm -hmm. it's easy to lose all the triggers and to stay sober what happens after that when people are done and they gotta go back to work they gotta go back to families all the same triggers all the same problems all the reasons why they got fucked up at first place are again there yes so what we do and what we say can i use these words am i free to speak yeah yeah, it's fine i'll be marked we are trying to unfuck the environment Uh that get them fucked up at first place because we doing it at their own place they go to work Mm -hmm. They have same families, they have same problems, they Mm -hmm. have same things that got them to look for escape in drugs, in alcohol, Mm -hmm. if they have insecurity, depending what kind of drug is, Mm -hmm. right? But whatever it is, this, once we recognize what it is, we don't treat the symptom anymore. Mm -hmm. And that could be just stay away from drugs, you have allergic reaction, you're sick, you have mental illness. You know what? It works. Mm -hmm. But what is the effectiveness of it? And what also get killed in, gets killed in process? What? If I save a person by telling that person you're sick. Oh, yeah. These right. people live lives, many of them, that they never leave the environment mm-hmm. of the addiction world. Mm. What do you think that's so? Because the, other, the rest of the world is too scary. They cannot mm. remember how he's having fun without having a drink. Mm-hmm. Been there, done it. When you start tailoring your life around availability to alcohol or drugs or something mm-hmm. to socialize with certain people, that's where you're losing it. Right. But if you are able, utilizing hypnosis, NLP, mm-hmm. talking to us, looking all these examples to change from inside out, uh-huh. your environment changes. And look, aha moment. Uh-huh. Yeah. All of a sudden, your environment changed. It's a awakening. Yes. Aha, breakthrough, awakening. Right, how you're seeing your environment changes. It's That's still right. there. And if we do that, they're free. Mm. They live free. And then again, 21 days, they broke the habit. Mm-hmm. It takes a year to replace, and this is science, right. to replace one habit with another. Mm-hmm. This is why in our training we communicate the message. We communicate the message of spirituality. We communicate the message of, of mm-hmm. healthy, of health, uh, of, of, of fitness. Mm-hmm. I use it as example. You can't go to the gym for a month, for a year, get yourself in a good shape, and then be fit till the end of your life. you got to keep doing it. Yes. So this is a training that's going to give you a set of tools that you're going to recognize like our clients do. Mm-hmm. Wow, I can really be happy. 
Mm. Well, you have something to fall on to. And then we have classes to keep these people involved at no cost. They are part of the group on the Facebook. They communicate. Uh-huh. They connect. They go face to face. And you'd be surprised to see quite how, how often it happens that somebody who was yesterday in a training today becomes a coach. Mm-hmm. Because and that only happens once they are able to step out of their own troubled environment and to see themselves and mm-hmm. go, aha, I got it. And then they speak about it mm-hmm. because it's indeed something that changes everything. Yes, got it. Okay. So it's a set of skills and tools that they're using That's and they're right. going to take out of there and see things differently and perhaps have an aha awakening, right? A moment, <laughs> right? Perhaps a sense of spirituality, but it's all these different things that come into play that then they're going to continue to use the rest of their life. Really. Yes. 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 All right. And the interesting thing is that you see the aha moments for different people at different days. Oh, I trip. imagine. Yeah. And very for, individual. But exactly. For some people, it will be uh, it was that one area that we finally touched in one day, and mm-hmm. oh, get it. And some people, they you know, I, I love it. I think it's beautiful when they hang in there. Mm-hmm. Like it's like day five, six, the aha moment hasn't come, but they're hanging in there, and then it finally comes, and you just see the sparkle in their eyes. Just when you're so desperate. For help when you're so willing to do anything, mm-hmm. I find that the aha moment comes a little bit sooner. Like mm-hmm. this woman, Marjorie, she was so broken and ready and willing to take any suggestion. She soaked it all in. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of times we get the question, how do you know they're not taking drugs or drinking behind the scenes? Mm -hmm. This training is for people who are ready and willing. Mm -hmm. The willingness is the number one key to successful training. You, nobody's going to hold your hand. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to sit behind you. As we were talking about, sit behind you and be like, go to class, make sure you log in, make sure you do this. Yeah. Nobody's standing behind you. Like most rehabs do. I mean, you have no choice, but to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's known in the field too, that you can send someone to rehab and, and drop thirty thousand dollars, thirty times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and if they're not ready, you've just dropped thirty thousand dollars. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Like if they're really not ready, because mm-hmm. often I'll get calls from parents, mm-hmm. honestly, and saying, "Should I take my teen or should I take my young adult?" And it's like if they're not ready, it's don't waste your money. That's it. So you're you're attracting people who are ready. Like they want to make the change. They're saying, "I want to do this now." But we still utilize hypnosis and NLP Mm -hmm. to push them into that, to Mm. pull them into awakening, to recognize that they are indeed powerful enough to do that. Incapable. Mm -hmm. Or or to remind them that the pain is too great, that they come to a threshold that they just cannot take it anymore. Mm -hmm. Decision has to be theirs, but we communicate, Mm -hmm. I use the proper word, we communicate to their subconscious mind Mm -hmm. and conscious mind using metaphors, examples, signs, reminders of their own lives so they make the decision. And what they need to do is easy, easier Mm -hmm. than anything else. Mm -hmm. Once they start doing it, it might be hard, but by the time they start doing it, they already have tools. We mention very low relapse rate, very high success rate, and we recognize that in training, we do have some people who relapsed, and uh, he just joined and he admitted, and we welcomed him again. Mm. And he came uh, back. He said, "I need to do it we again." We can recognize, we can recognize the difference. Ah. He memorized, very intelligent man. He memorized mm. everything we told him, but he couldn't get over addiction. He mm-hmm. went back to it, and we were still available. So he's going to training again. Not these days, right? He's on what day? Day ten. Day ten. Mm-hmm. So he's doing and well. This is the beauty in what the the beauty in what we have to offer is somebody can start the training, and we recognize or they recognize that they need something else, mm-hmm. and they go take care of. You know, they they need to go to an inpatient, whatever they must do, and they go. And we always say, we're here as soon as you're done. Because immediately when you get home, you're going to need something else. 
to stay oh, connected because yeah. you leave the treatment center. Yes. They wipe their hands. Yes. And it's hard if you have to go back home for your job. You have a family, so you can't just go to a sober living in a different state that you're in. You must right. go yeah. home. Yeah. You're going to need to do something. Yes. And that's one of the top complaints mm -hmm. of... Okay, rehab, er, everything was taken care of, and I didn't have to argue with my husband or my wife, mm -hmm. or I didn't have to feed the kids yeah. at night, and how stressful that is, and they get back at home, and they feel lost, and yeah. Even with IOPs, support programs that um, rehab programs often run where they go outpatient, and they come into the center for people who don't know that. They come in the center, let's say, like, between 3 and 6 p.m., they come in, they get some support, they go back home, and then... They gradually wean off of that, but this is this is a tool for them to use in between there, like when they're out, they could do that. They could do this. It can right. be used anytime. Any yeah, anytime. And we had examples mm -hmm. first time. And, okay, but um, let me back up a minute. So you're saying like this gentleman who relapsed, like or some people. I don't know mm -hmm. if it was him specifically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have to go to get the physical piece done with. Mm -hmm. Like there is a physical piece to some addictions that is actually dangerous if you're not medically supervised to come mm -hmm. off of that. So Absolutely. they have to detox first before they come into your program. What's your yes, we, we had idea. examples okay. where, we, where we turned some of them down. This is what Jody's referring to. Uh -huh. Go take care of yourself. There was a, mm -hmm. there was a gentleman I, I witnessed from, uh, from, from London that was every time we were communicating, interviewing him, can we give him a scholarship? He would hide behind, get off the camera, have some beer, and then, <laughs> and then come. come back. <laughs> and then he right. opened up, he told us, and it was one mm -hmm. and I, the session we were talking to him, that he said, I just can't help it. Well, you have to find a place where you can detox. Yes. Because as you said, right. pretty much anything that you get to over a certain limit yes. is dangerous getting off immediately. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, there is the element of that. But besides that, this has been shown to be effective in any stage of addiction. Okay. Maybe you are still an addict. Our uh -huh. friend that I'm talking about... Yeah. He was still an addict while in our training. Uh -huh. Our training maybe gave him something to think about, so he s wants to stop now. Mm -hmm. So we want to inspire people to think about being sober because life is so great without it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to help you remember that because you there was a moment of everybody's life when you knew that. We were all kids. Yeah. We were all happy for no reason whatsoever. Let me remind you of that. And if mm -hmm. I'm successfully doing that, you might have a chance to say, wow. I don't want this. So early stage, in, in the process, after, during, as add-on, effectiveness is there. Okay. Undeniable. And it's, Great. there's no uh, side effects, guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> right, there's well, no side effects. Well, you get to enjoy life a little bit more. You get to sleep a little faster. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You get to sleep through the night. <laughs> yeah. Eight hours. You might find a better partner or partner to start yes. with. Yes. Uh-huh. Job True. changes quite often, or the way you look at it, at uh -huh. least. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, but they're all good side effects, Those are all right? good problems to have, yes. <laughs> yes we are we for are. problems, but they're good we ones. We are. Right. We're solving problems <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> okay. Well, we're coming to the end of our time here, so please let people know how to find you if they're interested in signing up. Well, if you are ready and willing to make the changes, we are all here supporting you whenever you're ready, so you can call us at 844 454 8724. You can always email us as well and find us on Facebook at Live Rich. And then our website is Live Rich, L I V E R I C H dot org. And uh, we do have a Facebook group which is called the Live Free Training on Facebook. So you can okay. join and get connected. So they can join even before they do the training, Absolutely. the Facebook group? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So that's a great way for them to actually check out the vibe of the community and the vibe of the trainings. Yeah. As a matter of fact, one of the groups or meetings that we have is called Face to Face. And that group is open to anyone in our Live Free Face group. Uh -huh. So either... If you are already an alumni or you've never been to a class yet, you're still trying to find out what's all about, mm -hmm. these meetings are exactly tailored for that. So they come in, they get to meet with Dr. Will Horton, and we're there and we talk things about Life. what they're going to uh, Anything. through. 
Life strategies, it's strategies. Yeah. and especially uh, we love when we have our alumni and they can talk to these people as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I was there. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're going through and this is how it helped me. We love talking about life because mm -hmm. again, once quality of life is improved, any need for addiction becomes obsolete. Live rich has a name because we all want to live rich. Mm -hmm. Live rich doesn't mean having money. It's mm -hmm. okay if you do, but that, that it's not about it. Live rich is about being in love mm. with all there is. And once in love with all there is, what's wrong with the world? You can't truly live rich before you live free. And live free training gives you the tools to live free. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. about this interview. What struck me, I will say though, is the passion behind the training. So the passion to really help people with this training, to offer something that someone can do from their home, a huge barrier to getting sober, to getting out of any addiction, is having to go away for treatment often to go into rehab and you heard them say on the program you do have to get that detox part done but sometimes that can be done pretty quickly within a week or so and then someone could return to their home and start this program or when they come out of rehab have this as a supplement when they're back in their environment they're back home have this as a tool to really help them stay sober, continue to recover, continue to make those changes in their lives that they need to. That's so, so important. And that's really where long-term sobriety comes in. Can you make those changes that you need to make to sustain a lifestyle that's sober and feel good about it and feel wonderful about it and feel like you are living rich, like they say, but feel like you're living your life that you really want to live, that this is a happy change. It's not something that's um, dragging you down or saying, oh, I want to go back to that. Or when the urges come over you to really be pulled towards whatever your drug of choice is, you know, addicts talk about that all the time. And their program is saying, hey, we're going to go in there and make your quality of life so much better that that's going to disappear. That's going to go away. This is going to be so much easier for you, this whole path. So I was really impressed with that. And I find it such a fascinating training. All right, people, we are in the holiday season here. So when this airs, this is going to air on December 11th. And I hope you have a really happy holiday season that you don't get too stressed out. There are some extra resources on my website. I just published a video about how to reduce anxiety and offered a free worksheet with it that anyone could download and use. So that will be in the show notes, a link to that so that you could also use that at home. I know the holidays are often a happy time with family, but it also sometimes brings up anxiety for people dealing with in-laws or trying to buy presents for friends and family. And it's like, who do I get what? Or what is my budget? And do I have enough this year? I'm going to leave you with the message that you are enough. Time spent with you, thoughtfulness. There's all kinds of really low cost ways to give somebody a present. Sometimes that's the present of time. Like let's go do something special together. Let's play a game together. Let's go outside and spend time together. Like those are often precious gifts that people overlook. So I'd like for you to take that thought into the holiday season and into the new year with you that you are enough. 
not what you have and what you do, but just your presence. So with that, I'm going to sign off for this week. Peace. If you like this episode, do me a favor and rate, review, and subscribe on whatever player you like, or even better, tell a friend so that more and more people learn about hypnosis and how it can be helpful for them. If you want to know more about me, head over to drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z, hypnosis.com. You can see the downloads and see if there's one that's helpful for your life. Or you could also join the newsletter and get a couple of free files, as well as lots of good content. I've written a newsletter for well over 10 years. Go ahead and subscribe and join the rest of the world. All right, people, have a wonderful week.